Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. In Season 4, we learned a few basic definitions for some real virtues. In this season, we'll be trying to pin down the real meanings of some things that people treat like virtues, which aren't always virtuous. In other words, fake virtues. Today's fake virtue is... Freedom. This word is everywhere in America, and most places outside of it. Sometimes it seems to mean power, sometimes opportunity, sometimes political or military liberation, and sometimes not. However, I have noticed the curious pattern that the word freedom seems to show up a lot whenever somebody's trying to convince you of something. As with most of these fake virtues, there are really two main questions to ask. Question 1. What does this word really mean? Question 2. When understood correctly, is it really virtuous? I'll be asking these questions about each of these fake virtues, and we'll see how well they hold up. Here we go. Firstly, the definition of freedom is a little hard to pin down, because it seems to mean quite a lot of contradictory things. In a general sense, you could encompass them all by saying opportunity or ability, but that can't be right. You see, by that definition, freedom is basically the same thing as power, and if freedom is power, then only the strong are free. However, people who aren't particularly strong or influential can also live in freedom, so that's wrong. Let's look at the specific definitions and see if we can learn anything more from them. Well, there seem to be five main definitions. However, in my dictionary, two of them are essentially synonyms for freedom, so that's no help, while a third talks about political or national independence, in other words, freedom under specific conditions. Still, if freedom is just a political state, that's definitely not virtuous, and it doesn't sound right to me. The last two definitions I found here will probably be the most useful. One says that freedom is an exemption from control or interference, in other words, freedom from constraints. The other one says the power to determine actions, in other words, the freedom to accomplish things. Let's put those up. There we are. I think this gives us enough information about freedom to come to a few conclusions about it. Let's suppose, for example, that each of these represents a different type of freedom. Number one is the freedom from constraint. Number two, the freedom to accomplish. In other words, freedom from restriction and freedom for goals. Which kind of freedom you want most depends on what kind of person you are. For example, some people care much more about the first kind of freedom, about not being restricted, controlled, or interfered with, while others, like me, are more concerned with having the chance to accomplish goals. The really interesting thing about these two freedoms is that if they're taken to their extremes, they are mutually exclusive. After all, if nobody is ever restricted in anything they do, nothing will ever get accomplished. And if everything is based around ironclad goals, it would be very restrictive. As with many things in life, however, I don't believe that these two kinds of freedom need to destroy or contaminate each other. A balance can be struck between the two types of freedom, so that neither one of them gobbles up the other, leading to a comprehensive definition of the word. Having the freedom for goals means that there's something to accomplish, something that one can and should work on. However, it doesn't mean that you're forced to work on it. You could still choose not to. It's just not the most praiseworthy choice. For example, if you have a big project in front of you at work, and you know it'll be better for everyone if you finish it quickly. However, no one's holding a gun or a pink slip to your head. You could spend time on other tasks first. Now, finishing the task quickly is what you should do, but you still have the choice to not do that. That's real freedom. Some people make the silly mistake of thinking that freedom is the chance to do whatever you want. Others make the opposite mistake of thinking that it's the chance to do what you must do. Both are wrong. Freedom is the chance to do what you should do. Is this a virtue? No. Chances and opportunities are never virtues. Virtues are about how you act. Making good use of proper freedom by doing what you should do could be virtuous. Is it good nonetheless? Sure, as long as it's real freedom you're talking about. Running around indulging in every stupid passion you've got isn't freedom any more than it's freedom to labor for years under a communist dictator. Real freedom implies a higher cause to strive for, and that's a very good thing. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.